When calculating gross domestic product, or GDP, there are actually two different flavors of GDP that we could possibly be thinking about. We could either be thinking about what's called nominal GDP, or we could be thinking about real GDP. Nominal GDP is just in any given year, we're going to take the price of an item in that year and multiply it by the quantity of that item in that year, and then do the same for the second item and so on and so forth, and add all those up to get nominal GDP. This is what we talked about when we first introduced the concept of calculating GDP, and we're only looking at current prices and quantities when we do that. And we said that when we're looking at year-over-year -year changes in GDP, what we're seeing is both changes in the absolute quantities of things being bought and sold, but also changes in prices. Now, ideally, we'd like to separate these effects out and not have changes in prices conflating the growth rates in GDP. So we've actually defined a separate form of GDP called real GDP. Real GDP controls for changes in prices by holding prices constant from one year to the next. So here, real GDP, if we have a base year, what we're saying is we're always going to be taking the prices in that base year and then using the quantities of the current year. So when comparing GDP across years, we're not going to be changing these prices, so all the changes coming in are going to be due to changes in quantities rather than changes in prices. You'll notice from a notation standpoint here that we usually see nominal GDP written as P times Y, where we're going to see P as some measure of aggregate price level, and we're going to see that real GDP is what we think about when we see just our Y by itself. So again, the concept of real GDP versus nominal GDP is most easily explained via an example. Calculating nominal GDP is what we did when we first introduced the concept of calculating GDP. So calculating nominal GDP for any given year, whether it be 2011 or 2012, we're just going to be taking current prices and multiplying by current quantities. So here, for 2011, bread's contribution to GDP is just going to be the 2011 price times the 2011 quantity, or $300. Butter's contribution to 2011 nominal GDP is just going to be $2 times 50, or $100 which is how we got for 2011 $400 of total nominal GDP. If we wanted to calculate 2011 real GDP, because we've decided that our base year is 2011, and this is somewhat of an arbitrary choice, you'd have to be told what the base year is, and then go with that, well, we can say that real GDP then is just the price in the base year times the current quantity plus the price in the base year times the current quantity and so on and so forth. But the base year is 2011, so it's still going to be the base year price, which is this, times the 2011 quantity, which not surprisingly gives us the same values that we saw for nominal GDP. So again, we just get 300, 100, and 400. And in general, it is in fact the case that in the base year, so in this case in 2011, nominal GDP and real GDP are going to be the same, and that's just because of the way that nominal and real GDP were defined. So it becomes more interesting when we start thinking about years that are not the base year. So let's think about 2012. So again, 2012 nominal GDP was just taking 2012 prices or current prices and multiplying by current quantities. 
So for bread, we had four dollars times 125, which gave us a $500 contribution to GDP. And we had two dollars and fifty cents for butter times 60 units of butter, which gave us a $150 contribution to GDP for a total of $650 in nominal GDP. But now let's think about what happens when we go and think about 2012 real GDP. So when we're talking about 2012 real GDP, we want to be using these 2012 quantities, but we want to be looking at the base year prices. And the base year prices of the 2011 prices, which are over here, so to find bread's contribution to 2012 real GDP, we want to look at this price here, $3, times the current quantity, which is the 2012 quantity, of 125. So 3 times 125 is 375. Now we want to do the same thing for butter. We want to take the base year price of butter, or the 2011 price of butter, which is $2, and multiply it by the current, or 2012, quantity of butter. So we get 2 times 60, which is 120. So our real GDP for 2012 is 375 plus 120, which is, in fact, Four hundred and ninety-five. So it's helpful to think about how nominal GDP compares to real GDP. And we said in the base year, nominal GDP and real GDP are just the same. But you'll notice here that in this particular example, at least, our nominal GDP in 2012 is larger than our real GDP in 2012. And that's because the nominal GDP is considering both the increases in the quantities of stuff produced and the increases in the prices of those things. Whereas real GDP, the way we calculated it, is only considering the increases in the number of things produced and is holding the prices of those things constant. So it's actually pulling out only the effect of the changes in the amount of stuff rather than the changes in prices. Because of that, it's helpful sometimes to compare the percent change in nominal GDP to the percent change in real GDP. So again, the percent change in nominal GDP is what we did when we introduced the concept. And we know that percent change is just final minus initial divided by initial times 100%. So if we're going from 2011 to 2012, 2012 is our final, and we can say that the percent change in nominal GDP is 650 minus 400 over 400 times 100%, which is just 250 over 400 times 100%, which is 0.625 times 100% or 62.5%. So our change in nominal GDP is 62.5%. Our change in real GDP, well our real GDP went from 400 to 495, so this is just going to be 495 minus 400 divided by 400 times 100% which is just 95 over 400 times 100%, which is, in fact, 0.2375 times 100%, or 23.75%. So we can see that we get different values for the change in nominal GDP and the change in real GDP. And it shouldn't surprise you that this change in real GDP in this particular instance is smaller because it's taking out the effect of 
the increase in prices and only considering the increases in quantities. Because we've defined real GDP or real output or income by Y, and we've defined nominal GDP or nominal output or income by P times Y, we can think of the change, at least in percentage terms, in real GDP as just the percent change in Y. So the percent change in the real amount of stuff that's being produced. We can, on the other hand, think about the percent change in nominal GDP as the percent change in P times Y, which at the very least, to an approximation, is the percent change in P plus the percent change in Y. So you can see very clearly here how if we're thinking about percent changes in nominal GDP, we're actually considering both the increase or decrease in the amount of real stuff being produced and the percent change, increase or decrease in the overall price level.